Jackson Jones. Mm, I Good morning and welcome to St. Albans on this 24th Sunday after Pentecost, November 15th. We're glad you've joined us this morning. Our opening hymn is Eternal Father Strong to Save.
blessed father and blessed be his kingdom now and forever amen Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. Design known from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, worthily magnify. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in your Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud, Ehud died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jenben, King Jenben of Cain, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sesera who lived in Harosha Ha Goyim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly 20 years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Labadoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel, in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinam, from Kedesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Caesarea, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the wadi Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 23rd Psalm is one of the most inspirational psalms in all our lives. Today, our psalm is 123, and it has significance, and, and especially now. We will read it responsibly. To you, I lift up my eyes. To you, enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, in the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord, our God. 
until he shows us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy. For we have had more than enough of contempt. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich. And of the derision of the proud. Our second reading comes to us this morning from Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning the time and the season, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you beloved are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord, Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents came forward also saying, master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I've made two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents. For to all those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the one who loves us beyond all measure. Amen. Imagine our world today without mathematical insights of Albert Einstein that revolutionized our understanding of time and space. Or the scientific discoveries of Marie Curie that led to treatments for cancer. Or Rachel Carson's breakthroughs about the care of the environment. Imagine what would be lost from our collective lives without the works of writers such as William Shakespeare or or Toni Morrison, or artists like Claude Monet and Georgia O'Keeffe. Imagine a world that did not have the leadership or oratory skills of leaders such as Abraham Lincoln or Martin Luther King Jr. at key moments in our nation's history. It's a pretty impoverished alternate history to consider. Or imagine our individual lives without that teacher or coach who inspired us to try harder or believe in ourselves more, or the one who opened a door to a passion that led to our life's work, or some other source of joy for us, like how to sing or make music upon an instrument. Or let us for a moment imagine are having grown up without that parent or grandparent or godparent who let us know how much we were loved, no matter what our teenage struggles or other mistakes so-called were or might have been. It's a pretty impoverished alternative existence to imagine. I know my life would not have been the same. 
What if each of these persons in their field of study, their creative expertise or role in history or our lives had decided to play it safe and keep their God-given gifts hidden and stored up out of sight? Doing so would be a tragedy of impoverishment. We might say even one darkness worthy of weeping and gnashing of teeth. The message I hear in today's gospel is to live with courage, holy courage, confident in God's goodness and love. We are to use our God-given gifts, including our time, to develop them and increase them for the benefit of all. Doing so would be an entering into the joy of the Lord. It's hard to hear the parable from today's gospel in a way that's not literally about money. Jesus, after all, is describing what the kingdom of heaven is like. That's the it he is discussing. He's not giving us advice on how to build our 401k or how to build up our savings account, although Jesus has plenty to say about what to do with our treasure in other passages. He's trying to convey, as he has in the parables that preceded this one in Matthew's gospel, what the kingdom of heaven is like. It's like a man who sows good seed in his field, or a mustard seed, or leaven, treasure hidden in the field, 10 bridesmaids with a lamp, some with oil and some with not enough, and so on. Today's story about the servants and the talents is the 12th simile that Jesus uses in this gospel to teach us about the kingdom. Each story revealing a different facet or feature of God's dream for each of us and humanity. It's tricky business to use money as a spiritual metaphor. We have such strong experiences with money, but this is just what Jesus, the ever wise teacher, does to make his point. He uses something tangible from everyday life, money, to blow our minds wide open in order to help us think differently about God and the way to live our lives. A talent was about 15 years of wages for a laborer. So being given five talents was like being given 75 years of wages and two talents, 30 years of wages and one talent, 15 years of wages. Each amount is almost inconceivable to have in possession, let alone in trust to another individual. The first two servants invest the money in such a way that it is doubled. When the master returns, he is pleased, overjoyed and tells both well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He does not praise the first servant more for having earned more money than the second. They both get the identical response since they both did what was within their ability with what they had been given to steward in the time that they had. It's the third servant who gets a different response from the master. And it's this part of the story which makes many hearers, myself included, most puzzled, if not downright disturbed. The third servant who received the one talent approaches the master when he returns and tells him he hid the money in the ground out of fear and because he knew him to be a hard man. The money this servant had been given to steward did not multiply not even with a modest interest because he had hid the talent away and made nothing of the time he had been given to invest it. The master is upset rebuking the servant for not using rightly what he had been given and for squandering the time that he had to increase its value. This may seem unfairly harsh if we are trapped in a literal reading of the story. But what again, if we think of the money more symbolically if we enter into the story and take in its message, what do we consider about God and what we are to do with the gifts we are given from God with the time that we have? We see something that is not damning, but rather life-giving. God blesses us with many gifts, our passions and interests, our intellect, our creativity and everything else. God lavishes them upon us in a way that we will be able to make good use of them. In the gospel story, there is never any doubt in the master's mind that he had given the servant something 
within their power to steward well. One of the things I loved about teaching high school was helping my students and my colleagues discover their gifts. And this is one of the things I love about ministry in a parish, discovering Randy's and Stacy's enjoyment of teenagers and inviting them in to help with our high school youth group, challenging and odd as it is during this time of social distancing. Of learning of Rebecca's compassionate heart and her background as a CPA and seeing if she might be just interested in serving as the next treasurer of St. Elizabeth's. Or of witnessing Sarah and Meredith's connection to God through prayer and suggesting to Connie that each be invited to join the team of those who lead us in intercessory prayers on Sunday. In a spiritual community, we notice one another's gifts and invite them to multiply these gifts by being used, not hidden away. And this isn't just up to the clergy or staff. We all do this for one another. Take, for example, the team of Zergers who run the technology behind the scenes to make our worship flow so smoothly. They are the ones who make the recordings of our services on each Sunday so that others can watch them later or again on YouTube. They have recruited and supported one another with training sessions to learn the ins and outs of Zoom. Truly, without them, we would not be having the prayerful experience we are this morning. They have recognized a gift, a capacity, a willingness in one another, and they have invited it to multiply. In fact, during this morning's gathering time before our prelude, I learned that two more people had joined the team. And if you're interested, Tim Queenie is the person to speak to if you'd like to join in on that ministry. Similarly, there is now a request out to the parish for people who have the gifts to serve on the vestry. Nominating oneself or others is not simply filling a role that someone needs to do. Ultimately, it's about using one's gifts and skills of leadership for the benefit of this church during this important time of transition, pandemic, and reflection as we build and prepare for the future. The tragedy today's gospel warns us of is hiding away God's gifts and squandering the precious time we have to live and missing the opportunity to multiply our gifts through their use and development. I have a hand-painted piece of calligraphy in my office at home of a quote of Saint Irenaeus of Lyon. The glory of God is the human person fully alive. It's a stunning reminder of human flourishing. What was the biggest difference between the first two servants and the third? The first two trusted their master and took the risk to use and develop what had been entrusted to them. The third lacked trust, operated out of fear of what they thought the master was like and lived cautiously, failing to risk, or living fully or courageously. We might say the third servant was already living in a kind of darkness and a gnashing of his teeth. If we, like the third servant, distrust in God's goodness or doubt in God's blessing of us, or if we don't recognize our gifts or the gifts of others with whom we share our lives, this parable points us to a good place to begin witnessing God's generosity to us and learning to trust in God's love. What was given as five could become 10. What was given as two could become four. What was given as one could become two. But doing so involves trusting God's love, recognizing the many blessings we have been given to steward and risking the investment of our time, effort, and heart towards their right use. Doing so will multiply God's gifts and usher us into the joy of our Lord's kingdom, not only in some distant day, but in the here and now. For just as impoverished would be a world without Einstein or Shakespeare, so too would be our world and community without your God-given gifts if you buried them in the ground. Amen.
prayers this morning are found on page 10 of your leaflet. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. Please pray for a calming of the rancor, and anger, and frustration that are rife in our country. And pray for a peaceful transition for our vice president, for our president and vice president elect. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Thomas, our bishop, and for all other ministers, lay and ordained. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially those we name now silently or aloud. Please pray for Margaret, Amelia, Deborah, Josh, Tracy, Priscilla, Mike, Robin, Lana, Pete, David, Liz, Marjorie, Anne, and Tom. And Nancy. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. Most loving God, you have called us to care for the sick, the oppressed, the outcast, and the lonely. We ask that you open our hearts to all who are suffering in this pandemic. We pray for those who have lost their struggle, for those who are so ill, and for those who love and care for them. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. During this time of painful racial upheaval and divisiveness, you have called, you have courage, may we courageously confront the injustice and inequality that have so long plagued our country. We pray that these tumultuous days will serve to ring in a new and enduring age of compassion and inclusiveness for each and every human being here at home and around the world. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially those we name now, either silently or aloud. And we offer thanks for all veterans. O oh, judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we offer thanks today for the many years that Jim Strand has been with us as an organist, choir master, and friend. We wish him well as he moves to Virginia to be closer to his family. Godspeed, Jim. We pray for the repose of the soul today. I'm sorry. Our gratitude runs deep. And we praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom remembering especially this morning to pray for the repose of the soul of Sarah Louise Sawyer, parishioner and mother of Liz Cutler. May all who mourn be comforted. Lord, your loving, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you.
Oh Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully, may we obtain effectually by your grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to unmute yourself at this time. And let us pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, our glory, and the glory of the Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace, Robert. Peace, Robert. Peace, Robert. Peace, good. Peace to everybody. Well, good morning. And uh, again, it's, it's great to, uh, well, I said to some of you, it's great to be back. I appreciate the time. Um, uh, to get away to my home, uh, well, our home in Kentucky to vote. And so uh, we got back a few days ago and um, just uh, to know I, I'm getting through my emails and I will be uh, responding uh, as I do that. So um, thank you for, for your patience. Uh, want to draw your attention to a few announcements. Uh, the next week is Celery Sunday, and so there will be a cooler out in uh, the front of the church if you want to drop by um, stalks of celery, and we will gather those and take them to their next destination. Also, um, wanted to highlight, and I know uh, Reverend Holly did in her sermon, uh, that we are accepting nominations for members of the vestry. So if you would um, go on to the, the uh, parish website and see the nomination form there available to you, we're accepting nominations through November 22nd. Um, and let's see, finally, we're working on um, putting to, uh, together some opportunities during Advent. Um, our worship will shift just a little bit um, with the season and also we'll have um, a book available um, that we can read together uh, as you have done in the past. So that information will be coming um, this week in the e-news. Um, are there any other announcements that I may have? Hi, Lynn. Missed? Yes. Hi. Hi, Lynn. Welcome back. Uh, can I just make a quick announcement about our, about from the discernment committee really quickly? Yes, yes please. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, thanks. Um, hi, I'm Lisa Layton, uh, one of the co-chairs along with Phil Walsh of the discernment committee and just wanted to let you know that um, there's still time today, today's the deadline to uh, fill out our online survey um, that will help us prepare uh, essay questions that will invite um, potential rectors um, to, to apply per position. Um, thank you so much. We have 85 responses so far. Um, a good chunk of those are from the 930. So we really appreciate you're taking the time to fill this out. Um, you have until today, there will be other ways to, um, to uh, engage with us in the future, but this uh, survey has really been helping us. Um, and we'll put the link in the chat um, to the actual survey um, in case you wanna just click on that after this service. So thanks very much. Great, great. Thanks, Lisa. And thank you to the discernment committee for just the great and faithful work um, they've been doing over the past few months. Um, they are a good committed group and working hard um, and faithfully to, to, to move ahead. So uh, I'm just trying to think, um, we have a, in the announcement section on the, uh, in the bulletin, um, there's the nomination link um, and you, a couple other signups, uh, you can continue to pledge online there. And I think, um, uh, as Lisa said, then just go to the, the uh, parish website and look at that blue, um, the blue square that says transition uh, to a new rector and 
get all the information you need there. Does that sound right, um, Lisa? Okay, great. Um, let's see, I guess um, the hymn at our closing, Rise Up Ye Saints of God. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Please unmute yourself. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the spirit. Thanks, Thanks. God. Be to God. Good God. Good God. Good God. Good God. Mm-hmm. <laughs>